Well, I really hope you enjoyed those videos. I think they're such great fun. It's such a wonderful way for you to meet these authors as well, who we love so much and their books. So thank you so much to Anna Stern and watch out for Das Alles Hier Yet. That's Anna's book. We want that in English as soon as possible, please. And La Sustraction des Possibilités, that's from uh, Joseph Incardona. Um, desperately want to have that in English too. Um, Die Nicht Sterben from Dana Gregorcia. Dana Gregorcia is one of our favorite Swiss authors as well. That book on Dracula is coming out uh, next year. So that please, yes, in English too. And if you want to um, see and hear more of Dana Gregorcia, you can hear a longer interview with her in my riveting interview series, which you'll be able to see from today. We have two new Swiss riveting interviews being launched today. And thank you also to Anne-Sophie Soubilia, who was talking to us from her mountain retreat. And Neige Anterieux is out already in French, and we would like that very much in English as well. Now, on our Swiss travels, um, we would like to introduce you now to another four authors, and we're going to um, the Italian part of Switzerland, the French part of Switzerland, and the German part of Switzerland. We'll also be making a trip to the north of England. You'll see that in our final of the, uh, the final video of the four videos you've got coming up now from Fabio Andina, Simona Lappert, Max Lober, and Sibylla Bell. So enjoy our next four author videos from Switzerland. Hello everyone, my name is Fabian Dina. I'm a Swiss writer of Italian language. And today I want to introduce myself as a writer showing my publications. The first one was Ballate dal Buio. Ballate dal Buio, uh, Ballads in the Dark. It's a collection of poems. Second publication was uh, my first novel titled Ushirne Fori, Getting Out. And after that came my second novel, La Pozza del Felice. La Pozza del Felice that was published by Rubettino Editore, Italian publisher. And the translation of the title can be The Pound of Felice. And my last publication is this one. It's a collection of short stories still again by Rubettino Editore, titled Sei tu Ticino, are you Ticino? But the book I want to tell you today is, is this one. It's my lovely book. It's my book, uh, the book that I, I care like a little song. Uh, La Pozza del Felice, La Pozza del Felice, was also translated to German by Rotpun Verlag. It's a publisher from Zurich with the title Tage mit Felici, Days with Felice. And after the publication of this translation, the book stayed in the top 20 of the bestseller of the Swiss bestseller for 14 weeks, okay? selling so far more than 20,000 copies. We are nearly 25,000 copies by now. And La Pozza del Felice also won some important prizes. Leontica is the village up in the mountain where the story is set. And Felice is the old man a 90 years old man, the main character of my story. In the story, it's narrated by uh, a, an almost invisible narrator. It's an, old man, it's an old man together with this young narrator and they all go day by day around in the village, up in the mountain, wandering around. And for eight days, they stay together and they will show and explain to the reader about living in harmony 
in the nature, living in harmony with all the other characters living in the village and in the valley. And they will show how it is possible to live happily with the least things. Because one very important thing about uh, Felice, the main character, this old man, is that he is a minimalistic man. His philosophy is the less I have, the happiest I am. And he, he is almost a, a monarch, a Buddhist, by showing all this to, to the reader, but he's not a monk. He's almost a philosopher, but he's not a philosopher. Just by showing us his simple life, we will get, we will slow down at this pace and we will get in love with this type of life because right now in this society, we just run and rush and are always stressed. We, we cannot stop, we don't want to stop, we don't know how to stop and take a rest and look up in the sky and look at the nature and stay close to and have a nice close relationship to the nature. But Felice gives uh, give us the way to do this. If you want and if you need more information about myself and about the book, you can go on my website. There are many reviews in Italian, in German, some in English too. And that's all. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and take care of all of you. Peace and love. Bye-bye. Hello, dear editors and publishers. My name is Simon Lappelt. I am a writer and based in Zurich. I write poetry and fiction, and I've written two novels so far. Uh, both were published by Diogenes Verlag, um, who is also here in Zurich, based in Zurich as well. And the first novel, uh, my debut, was published now as a paperback by the Ogenes Verlag in spring. And my second novel, Der Sprung, which would uh, be something like Jump in English, uh, came out in 2019 in August, also by the Ogenes Verlag. And this is also the book I wanted to tell you a bit more about. So the protagonist of this book is Manu. She's a young woman, a gardener and biologist, and very fond of plants. And she is standing on a rooftop and refusing to come down. And very quickly, a lot of onlookers gather down on the square uh, in front of the house. And they are all speculating whether she wants to kill herself or what she's up to. And there's a press coming, there's the police coming. So there's really a lot going on down there, a lot of people. And the novel doesn't follow Manu's perspective now. Uh, so it doesn't follow the person on the roof, but it follows 10 different characters um, who are gathering down there on the square. Some of them are very close with Manu, like her boyfriend or her sister and others don't even know her or just crossed her briefly in the past. And somehow all of these characters start to stumble a bit in their daily life because of Manu's behavior on the roof. And they somehow start to question their own lives and, and their own futures. What is really important for me when I'm writing is that I I have a lot of respect for my characters. I try not to describe them from above, like, like in a moral kind of way or in a judging kind of way. I really try to get to know them. Maybe a, a little bit like in, in real life when you, when you get to know somebody and you maybe have an idea 
uh, of what this person is like or maybe of a prejudice and then the closer you get uh, the more you see uh, the more uh, unexpected sides the more beautiful sides but maybe also the more dark sides and dark corners and yeah in writing for me it's a bit the same and actually the nicest thing that that can happen is when when the characters start to develop their own lives and they start to throw over my plans that I have for them and just do whatever they want and maybe it's not at all what 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 I um, had in mind for them so that's actually the nicest part Another thing that, that is very important for me during the writing process is the sound and the rhythm. So the sound of a word or the rhythm of a sentence, because for me, they are transporting meaning uh, as much as the meaning of a word or a sentence itself. So I read out loud everything that I write um, over and over. It's a very good method for me uh, to, to find out uh, why a sentence is bumpy or why a character is behaving in a way which is maybe not that credible. Um, so this means a lot to me, the, the, the sound and, and the rhythm. And I have the feeling that my ears are somehow co-writers um, throughout the process. And this is also why I actually have a huge respect for for translators uh, for the process of translating because this is really a challenge to to transport the meaning as well as the sound into another language and when when it happens when 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 it succeeds it's actually amazing You've published four novels and we're about to have your fourth novel translated, the first translated into English, uh, which is just fantastic, A Long Way From Douala. It's been translated uh, by Ros Schwartz and published by Hope Road uh, Publishing, and it was published in French by Edition Zoé. So you wrote this in French with lots of sprinklings of fantastic African dialects and, you know, beautiful visual descriptions. Now, this is a novel set partly in Cameroon, partly in Africa, unlike your other novels, which you've set in Switzerland uh, and are more about the immigrant or African experience in Switzerland. Now, this novel, you actually went to Cameroon, you followed the, the journey of these boys. It's about a young boy called Jean um, Choupé, and it's about wanting to travel to Europe to play football. <laughs> so. um, this novel is really, this novel, we should see what we're talking about. I got it now, and I feel like loads of happiness um, mm -hmm. since I received it. Um, uh, this book is very important for me. Uh, as you said, it's the fourth one that I wrote in, uh, in English, um, in French, excuse me. <laughs> You probably could write it in English, but uh, you wrote it in French. It's the fourth one in French, but it's the first one in English. And it's very important because there I start really with fiction, uh, not out of fiction, not not really um, taking lots of elements from my life, from my own experience, but trying Memories. to come back in my mind, you know, and um, to talk about my, um, the, the, the childhood, the teenager, the city where I grew up. In the first books, I talked a lot about um, Africa and Europe, Switzerland and I mean Cameroon and Switzerland. So that I wanted to really to go back just in Cameroon and to think about fiction, really fiction. Uh, what I mean by fiction is really when my personality, my life is not going to take over the place of uh, the protagonist. I've been writing now and publishing for 10 years, so I'm, I'm getting like white hair, you know, on my back. <laughs> so um, today I think that Luan uh, uh, du is a book of passions. I'm thinking about fanaticism, religions, um, and religions here in this book. We can talk about um, 
Christian, Christianity, Muslim football. I can even say football at first is a religion, football is fanatism, and you people in the UK, you know, with the hooligans. Uh, in Cameroon, it's really something amazing. But let's not just see the negative aspect of the fashion, which is uh, fanatism. We can see also the positive aspect, which is um, something that will make you still because you have, you believe in that and it's something that leads you uh, forward. The amazing thing about this novel is how much you get into it and how much politics there are in the background. Um, but you sort of almost, forget about it because the story is so interesting the characters as you're describing Roger and um, Jean and the mother and Simon they're such wonderful characters but there in the background you've got Boko Haram you've got um, Christianity Islam you've got you know all those issues very contemporary issues and you've got immigration I think I'm just um I'm, I'm just a writer and a, a storyteller. And uh, a writer is supposed to be a witness of his world. So I cannot write out of what is happening around me. Um, I, I want, I mean, one of my dreams is like, if somebody reads me uh, in one century, that the person could understand what was the life of a young black homosexual writer um, coming from Cameroon and living and who had lived in Switzerland during this time. For me, it's really important. If as artists, we cannot leave this kind of uh, document that will testify um, an era, then I think um, we can do something else. Thank you, Max Lobby, very much indeed. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sibylle Berg. I'm a Swiss author and I uh, wrote 17 books, 27 plays, uh, translated in 34 languages. And my last book, uh, Crime Brain Fuck, will be now translated from Tim Moore. It will be finished in January. The title of the book sounds in English maybe a little bit strange. Uh, so crime means crime, the music, and brain fuck is actually the, uh, the name of a computer language. The book was quite a big success in Germany and in the German-speaking areas. Uh, sold uh, far over 100,000 copies, mainly to young men, young women, nerds, and so on. And the subject of the book is uh, dealing with the post-capitalism area and the surveillance and how this both goes to, together against uh, the poor. You can say the poor or the normal people or the middle class. While I stay in uh, UK, I travel a lot in places like Birmingham, Rochdale, Liverpool, all kind of these places. And what I realize uh, when I see, especially in, uh, uh, in estates, all the youngsters listen to crime music. And um, I uh, realized the importance of this music type uh, for, for the young people in UK. And I, uh, I was inspired a lot. And uh, I think the rhythm uh, and the groove of the crime is into my writing. And uh, as I finish, I was sure I, I must go on tour with a young crime artist from UK. And I found T. Rhodes. He's a young artist. He uh, was 14 when I met him from Birmingham. And uh, so we did a tour together with readings uh, and, and videos and had up to thousand and more um, in the audience and this was a big success and uh, so maybe you hear by yourself what I mean. I'm the crime MC, open your eyes and see, I'm the crime MC, G to the R to the I M E, I'm the crime MC. Man, I'm real bad man and I say that's crime, spit bad vibes and I flow bound crime. You're not a bad man, put down your knife, flowing all the time, yeah, ain't dead, that's crime. Man, I'm real bad man and I say that's crime, spit bad vibes and I flow bound crime. You're not a bad man, put down your knife, flowing all the time, yeah, ain't dead, that's crime. This was a nice example. The next friend I met in uh, UK is Ash. Ash is also from Birmingham and uh, he 
read a little, little piece of the book now in English. So it goes like this. Don felt rage and refuses to accept her period end role as scum and isn't waiting for love anymore, isn't waiting for something like a future to sprout in front of her door. Nothing will ever sprout there. It's a desert left behind by the elderly, along with these living conditions. Ah yes, god damn it. Don was a passive aggressive. She was female. She couldn't do any better. When People have the opportunity to torture others, they do it. When they have the chance to take something away from others, they do it. This mechanism, or call it this instinct that they let guide them without thinking, that they give free reign to eradicate anything and everything that stands in their way. You want war, you get war, Don said to herself. So that's a, a piece of the reading. And honestly, I can't wait for the whole book to be translated and to be finished. And I can't wait for it to actually touch the streets of the UK, to touch Birmingham. I can't wait for you lot to read it. But yeah, thank you. Back over to Billy. This was cool. Thank you, Ash. Thank you, T-Rods. And uh, what I uh, forget to say, uh, we going to do a crime musical, maybe if... Uh, Corona is gone next year, uh, together with uh, three big theaters in Germany and with uh, crime kids and stars from Rough Squad Art Foundation in London. And then we make a tour in England, in Scotland, and Ireland, and Tokyo. Okay, thank you. Goodbye.